Hello, everyone. I'm Annette Cohn Skelton, and I'm the director of MOCA GA. Welcome. This tonight is uh, Ariel Danielle's artist talk. She was MOCA GA's 2019 2020 Working Artist Project Fellow. Yay, Danielle. <laughs> I want to tell you a little bit about the Working Artist Project. It is an awards program to support established visual artists of merit who reside in the metropolitan Atlanta area. This initiative provides an unparalleled support for individual artists, expands the museum's mission, and promotes Atlanta as a city where artists can live, work, and thrive. The program is generously funded by the Charles Loredans Foundation, the Antonori Foundation, the AEC Trust, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Yay! This year's round of Working Artists Project Fellows was selected by Wesson al -Qadari. I don't think she's on tonight. Uh, she's the key, chief curator at the St. Louis Contemporary Art Museum. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about you, Ariel. All right. <laughs> Ariel's a native Atlantan. She was born and raised here in Atlanta, Georgia. She graduated from the University of West Georgia with a BFA a uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. She draws directly from her life and she places herself, as most of you know, in her paintings. She welcomes viewers to participate in what she calls a process of introspection. Her aim is to represent African American women as thriving and not just surviving. Uh, Ariel's work has been exhibited at the Mint in Atlanta, the Goat Farm, Zucott Gallery, it goes on and on, y'all just bear with me, Dalton Gallery, Tila Studios, Trio Contemporary Art Gallery, Perez Museum in Miami, and the California African American Museum. She was a semi-finalist in the Bombay Sapphire Artisan Series in 2018 and also a finalist in 2018 of Art Adia. She has been featured in the Studio Museum Magazine, Voyage Atlanta, Sorjo Magazine, mentioned in, of all things, the New York Times, and featured on the cover of CAAM Summer Catalog 2019. Now, Ariel, because this is virtual, um, we, we have work with the artists to produce a pre-recorded artist talk. And so we'll be showing you that now, the video. And if you have comments or if you have questions, use the chat box and at the end of the video, uh, Ariel will be happy to make comments or answer your questions. Yes. Thank you all for joining us. Hi, this is my exhibition, It Starts So Simple. I'm really excited to show you all, do a quick pan of the room. It's my first museum exhibition so I'm really excited about it. I wanted to talk briefly about just the Working Artists Project in general and how happy I am to get it. I think 2020 was a hard year to stay motivated in, but I'm actually very grateful that this happened for me during 2020 because it kept me focused. It kept my mind in a place of wanting to create work that hopefully would have an impact for people that have had a hard year. Um, so I think even though at first I was really like, dang, I can't believe 
uh, having this solo exhibition during like probably the worst year ever, um, it really kept me going. I don't know how my, my mindset, my mental health or anything would have really taken a plummet possibly if I didn't have this show. So I'm really happy and grateful to be a part of the 2019-2020 Working Artist Project Fellow. So I wanted to talk briefly about my process of creating these paintings. My process has changed almost completely since being a part of this project. Um, I knew that I wanted to create these paintings in a good time where I wasn't really stressed out, like pressed for time. Um, it, I consider myself a slow painter, but I keep being told that I'm not, so who knows. But I wanted to try and figure out a way to get these paintings out a little faster than my usual. So I will use this, the Friendsgiving painting as an example, since it's the largest one and it took me the longest. So I have my idea. And with this painting, I'll have the idea, I'll take the photo, and I want the photo to be pretty much exactly how the painting needs to be. So it's kind of a long process because it's a lot of photos. For each painting, I probably take like around 100 photos because I want it to be perfect for the next part, which is me um, projecting it. So this was the first time I ever used a projector, but I knew that it would help. And I've been told by other artists that projecting just helps, you know, sp speed up the time. So I needed these images to be perfect so I could project them. But when it came to some of these, and I'll use this next one as an example, sometimes the image I take isn't exactly how the painting is in my head. So for this painting, the fruit one, um, I didn't have a bowl of fruit this beautiful. Um, I just didn't, but I knew I wanted to paint a beautiful bowl of fruit. So I set up everything else, the canvas myself in the room, um, took the picture and then I go to Photoshop. So this is the first time I ever used Photoshop either for my paintings. Like I said, this is all new for me, this process. So took this and I photoshopped the image of fruit into the painting. And then I project, trace out the projection, and then I get to painting. So it's quite a long process, but it did help me speed up because before this, if you look at my older work, um, it was more freehand. So that's why I think they, they look quite different than my paintings before because my paintings before, you know, the hands would be a little awkward, sometimes the eyes would be a little awkward, which I did like about my paintings, but I do also like the more preciseness that you get from um, projecting and outlining. So that kind of goes along with just having to adapt with the, the time, the process. I knew that this was gonna be hard for me as what I consider a slower painter. Um, so I had to adapt and figure out a way to create work that I could also be proud of, but just maybe a little more efficiently. So there is a video projection that's a part of this exhibition. So if you come to the museum, you can also see it. And that's me showing the full year of me creating these paintings. I did a quick behind the scenes look of each portrait in this show of my process. So that'll be projecting here at MOCA. But also if you go on the website and you watch the 360 tour, you can watch the video there too. So definitely check that out because I think the video shows a really good behind the scenes look at my process. So I'm going to show you guys around and talk a bit about each painting and give a little backstory so you know a little bit more about me and my work. Um, so we're going to start at the largest piece here. It's called Cheers to You, Friendsgiving 2019. I do a Friendsgiving every year. Um, not this year though, but I have annual Friendsgiving at my house and I have all my friends. We bring food, we talk, we drink. It's a lot of fun. Um, this is a good example of the kind of paintings I create. It's all based around moments in my life that I think matter. 
and that I want to capture and make into a painting. So even though Friendsgiving was something I do annually, I knew at 2018 Friendsgiving that I wanted to make a painting of it at my next one because it, it was something that was special to me. So I remember texting all of my friends in a group message and being like, okay, this Friendsgiving, I'm going to be taking photos of you guys, so come ready because um, it's going to be turned into a painting. So this, is, this was a long premeditated painting. Um, with all of my dearest friends, I only had a couple who couldn't make it, but um, this is generally the, the gist. So yeah, this is a good example of when I have like just moments that I know I want to capture, this is a big one for me. So basically this painting, um, I just wanted to paint fruit. I really like painting fruit. I don't know, it's very random, but I knew for this exhibition, throwing a random painting of a bowl of fruit would be very weird. Um, so I was like, how can I do something I just have been really wanting to do, but also incorporate it into my show? So I made it into a portrait of me and my studio with like the window behind me, um, painting a bowl of fruit. And this is one of my favorites because it kind of was just my way of doing something that I wanted to do and making it work, you know? Um, so yeah, and I really liked the palette because I did kind of like impasto-y. It's kind of thick. I don't know if you can tell. Um, layered, but yeah, that's that. This one is titled A Glittery Veil. This one was actually the first one I did for this exhibition. So to give a little backstory for the title of this exhibition, it starts so simple. My ideas for this show was really me just painting what I wanted to paint, what I felt in the moment, because that's kind of just what I do. Each painting just kind of comes to me in the moment of me doing something, and if it feels like something that matters, I'll turn it into a portrait. Um, so this was around the time that the show Euphoria came out, starring Zendaya. Um, it was a really big, very popular show for like me and my friends and everything. We loved it. So one of the things that really turned into a trend after Euphoria came out was really glittery makeup, like rhinestones and glitter. Everyone was doing it after that show. So this portrait is about that. If you can look close, there's like glitter on the eyes, um, like on the eyelid and then like the little dot rhinestones. This was um, Matt, the character Maddie on Euphoria. I based the eye look after that. But basically, this was really just how it was. Like after that show came out, we were all rhinestones and glitter. It was fun. So this painting is just based off of the influence that that show had and how all of me and my friends, when we were getting ready, this is kind of how it went in our rooms. All the glitter, all the mess, you know, it's never clean when you, well, I don't know, maybe for some people, but for me, it's never clean getting ready. It's just stuff thrown around everywhere. So that's what this one is and then like with the background the colors the purples the blues and stuff like that it's also based off of um the show because the the color scheme and everything it, it was just beautiful so this is all really based around my the influence that show had over like me and people like me i guess this is actually a very good example of it started so simple because this kind of jumps to this is one of the last paintings i created for this exhibition um, and it's titled, Didn't Know About You Till I Was 22. Um, and this is a Juneteenth shirt. Juneteenth. So basically, it started so simple because like I said earlier, my show at first was just, you know, ideas that came to me, that things that mattered to me that I wanted to paint. But as 2020 went on and, you know, this year has been a rough one for a lot of people, the Black Lives Matter movement that happened after George Floyd was killed, um, I think we were all impacted in a, a hard way, especially the black community, obviously. 2020 was the first year that my friends and I really cared, not cared, but really put a lot of emphasis on Juneteenth. It wasn't something that I had ever celebrated before. It wasn't something I ever learned about. My family never really celebrated it. But this year, 
And from this year on, for me, I felt like this is a day that I need to make sure people see and is heard and I will forever celebrate. And if I ever had kids, I will make sure they know what Juneteenth is since I didn't learn about it until I was literally in my 20s. That's why it's titled that. So it kind of shows how this exhibition started simply, but then as the year went on and things start to become more heavy, my paintings ended up not being so simple anymore. Basically like the, the um, meanings behind them weren't as light. Like this one's not as light, even though when I create these paintings, I still want them to be nice to look at, like I, the colors and the style and everything. I still want, even if the meaning behind them is heavy, I want them to be enjoyable to see, you know? Because even though the meaning behind this painting is a heavy one, it's also a celebration. Like this shirt says Juneteenth Worldwide Celebration, you know? So that's what this one's about. And I love it. One of my favorites. Love the shirt. Couldn't believe I found it on eBay. Really happy about it. So let's keep going. This one is, I think, it, probably another top three that people have really been drawn towards, most likely because of um, how we've all gone through a pandemic and quarantining. Um, it's titled We Adapt. So let's show a little me get out of it. And this is also one of my more fun ones, even though, um, or lighthearted ones, even though when I think about it now, it's crazy how in the beginning of quarantine, you know, we were really trying to make the best out of it. I'm speaking generally, but I know me and my friends, we're all trying to make the best out of it. And like, we're gonna take this time and we're gonna be productive and this, this and that, and we're gonna do Zoom chats and, Da, 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 da. So anyways, this is really like the beginning of quarantine, trying to adapt to this new lifestyle. Um, so it's me doing, I know, I feel like a lot of people really took up skincare during quarantine. So I have a charcoal face mask on, I'm in bed. This is my little laptop doing a little Zoom friend chat. Um, for us, it was called House Party. It's like an app on your phone where you can all get on and play games and stuff. And I'm drinking my little glass of wine. You got the black box. I drank a lot of black box during quarantining. Um, and then my dog there, Zara, who follows me everywhere. So this is really just one of those paintings where it seems like everyone relates to in a way of like having to just adapt to the way the world has changed this year um, and trying to make the best out of it. I think we, a lot of us just have to adapt. So yeah, this is, this is what this is. And it is also one of my favorites. Um, I think it's just fun. I think it's fun to look at the patterns, the colors. I think it's just a fun painting. So yeah, keep going. This one's probably the most random one it also kind of goes with the it started so simple theme where this was one of the earlier ones that i created where i, I just wanted to paint something fun um like the euphoria painting was me really just wanting to have some fun with something that was inspiring to me at the time so this one is probably like i said the most random one i'll get out of it and show you a little better view Um, okay, so the meaning behind this one, I have Instagram, I think a lot of us do, um, and I tend to follow a lot of pretty girls, you know, that can really make your self-esteem plummet, but also inspire looks and things like that. So this is on the other side of following someone who inspired something in me, inspired this painting. So I follow this girl who posted a photo like this on her Instagram where it was her and her boyfriend, I presume, um, posed in this just, the, the weirdest way. It was just, I saw the picture and I was like, this is amazing. And that's why this painting is called Chef's Kiss, you know, Chef's Kiss. Um, Cause I just thought how hilarious is this angle. So it was literally this, it was her face and like the side of his head. And then there's a mirror in the background of them where you could see her on his lap, like with her butt fully out in the mirror. And I was like, what a concept, what an angle. I wonder, I just had this whole thing in my mind of like, I wonder how long that took. 
where did this idea come from? I just was really tickled by it and it made me want to recreate it. So like I keep saying, this was in the beginning of me painting for this exhibition where I was just, you know, having fun, um, wanting to put myself in the scene with my man. So yeah, that's what I did. Very random, but it was a lot of fun to paint. It was very hard to take the photo. Also, I should say that that's another reason why I titled it Chef's Kiss because the effort to get this angle is not an easy one. So <laughs> yeah, that's this one. Just, just a fun one. And to bounce off of fun, we'll go to another more serious one. This is actually the last painting I did for this exhibition. Um, it is me and my husband, Derek. Back up so you can see. It's titled Be Safe Part Two. And if you know my older work, I have a painting from probably 2016 that's titled Be Safe. And it was based off of, I can't remember, which is very sad, but I can't remember, but it was a police killing that happened in 2016. I can't remember who it was because there's been so many since then, but I created a painting called Be Safe where I was wrapping, literally this exact painting basically, um, where I was trying to shield Derek from me being scared. Like at the time, it, it was like back to back killings. I think like two or three happened in the span of like a month and it was just a scary time. So this is what this painting is based off of. And the red and the blue, if you get close, you can see there's red, blue. I have like some red, blue highlights kind of popping out in different places, but it represents police um, lights. So like I said, this is the last painting I created for this exhibition. Also in the midst of like a really intense Black Lives Matter movement in 2020 this year. So this is what this, it's about and yeah I don't you know there's not much else to say about it because I'm pretty sure you know what police brutality is and yeah this is what this is based on so if you are interested you can go to my website and see the first one and it's funny because over the years my style has changed quite a bit so be safe the first one looks a lot different from this one even though it's the same position same blue and red, it looks very different. So I think it'd be interesting to check out how that other one looks. So this one is titled To Keep Secure From Danger or Against Attack. And that is the definition of protection. So this is, um, I think very obviously based off of the pandemic um, with us wearing our masks, our masks, being there to protect us and I wanted the I wanted the viewer to be able to look at this painting and not know if I'm taking the mask off or if I'm putting it on. Um, I like the idea of people kind of coming up with their own concept with this. The eyes are probably one of my favorite pair of eyes I've painted. I think there's like an intensity in them that I really like. Um, the hair was a lot of fun to paint also. This is just a fun, quick one. These small ones are quicker, but I still feel like have an impact even though they're smaller. Um, but yeah, this is basically based off of COVID, but also there, there's kind of a deeper meaning to it where I'm thinking, when I was creating this, I was thinking of how masks are here to protect us like the title, but the pandemic has not only been hard like from getting sick, but just like financially, um, it's had a really hard impact on all different communities. I think the black community suffered a lot. Um, they have, they, <laughs> we had really high numbers of people dying of COVID in the black community. Um, it's just, it's been hard for everyone, but basically this is about that, um, just this wild pandemic of 2020. So yeah, start so simple, but this one's not quite so simple. But to go off the opposite of that, this is one that was more simple. This is the second painting I worked on for this exhibition. 
It's the second largest one also. So back up a little so you can see it. This one is titled, I Dream of Crimson Nights. It's also one of my favorites, my personal favorites, because I really just like the red. Um, the last one I showed was red, but this one, something about red is just nice, right? So to give a little background on I Dream of Crimson Nights, I don't think I said all of these paintings are self-portraits. I think it's probably obvious now, but I always place myself in each one. So this one is me um, having sushi in a restaurant and I'm alone except for the cooks over here. If you can see, yeah. So the meaning behind this is quite simple. I just wanted to create a painting showing one of my favorite things to do, at, which is when I go out. If I go out to eat, which isn't often, but if I do go out to eat, I usually want sushi. It's one of my favorite foods, if not my favorite food. So I just wanted to create a painting showing me doing one of my favorite things. And it's very funny because this painting, even though it was the second one I started for my exhibition, um, it took me a long time to finish. So throughout working on this is when the pandemic was just starting. Uh, so it's funny now the painting, it looks like I'm alone and it kind of goes with the idea of like social distancing, even though that's not what the concept was when I first created this painting. It was really just how it was. But I also, with the table being off the edge, I wanted to give the idea of maybe I'm not alone. Someone could be on the other side of this table because the table is only half showing. So the other half, I could be with someone, you don't, you know, it's, it's up to you to decide in a way. So this one was just, it was a lot of fun, a lot of red, a lot of details. That's why it took so long to finish. Um, even though, like I said, I started it as my second piece, I probably didn't finish it until a couple months ago. Like this was one of the last paintings I finished. So it's crazy how long these take. But so that's every painting from my exhibition. But I did wanna just talk a little more about the meanings behind why I create what I create, why I do what I do, because I think it's important to talk about um, being a black artist and trying to give a narrative that is more modern. I want to create work that shows black figures thriving um, and not just surviving. That's a line that I put into my artist statement, but I really kind of live by because I feel like for me, I didn't see a lot of art like this growing up, if any, really. And I, once I knew that I wanted to be an artist, I knew that I wanted to create the kind of work that I would love to see in the museum or in a gallery or just anywhere. I didn't see stuff like this that I, like really gave me a feeling of inclusion until I was probably like 22 which I think is insane. Cause I wonder how art could have really impacted me when I was younger if I saw something that looked more like me. So that's really the meaning behind it. I want to, I use myself as a vessel for each painting, but I don't see myself when I look at it, if that makes sense. Um, so I just want to create work where someone like me can enter a gallery or a museum and feel like, wow, like that's me. I feel represented and I feel represented in a way that also makes me feel good because when I did see black figures in art history when I was in college or something, it was usually not nice. It was usually about um, a struggling, you know, slavery, racism, things like that. And that's something I, you know, I don't want to forget. That's why I have paintings like the Juneteenth painting and the one where I'm protecting my husband. But I do think, you know, there's, there should be space for black joy in every space. Um, we should see that representation. And I think now, as of 2020, more artists are being able to do work that can be like really just mundane. Like I just want to create a painting of me eating sushi. I think times are changing where black artists are able to create work like this because I think it was much harder before to make something like this and have people care, you know? 
Uh, I think artists in the past, like Carrie Mae Weems, have kind of paved a way for artists like me who want to do self-portraits, but in a more fun way, showing my life as a black woman in modern day. So that's really why I do what I do. So that's everything. I want to thank you guys for watching and listening and caring about this work and what I've been doing. I really have been just so grateful for all the love I've gotten for the show. It, it meant a lot for me. It's very personal to me. So I just want to thank you guys. I want to thank Mocha and yeah, thank you for watching. Perfect. So I'm on East Lopez and I will be reading the questions this evening. So if you have any questions for Ariel, please post them on the little chat and I will read them out loud for her. All right, so this question is from, and forgive me if I mispronounce any names, uh, Marcia Cohen. She says, thank you for your talk. Where do you place yourself in the history of painting and portraiture? Do you have artists and or periods in art history that use portraiture that have been influential? I saw this question and I was like, hmm, but for me, it's very much just modern day. I don't really think of um, past times. The artists that influence me today are still making art right now, like um, Carrie James Marshall and Amy Sherald. Um, so I don't really place myself anywhere else other than like the right now. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So another question by that same person was, might you please comment on why some paintings are not stretched? Some look like they have been on panels or stretchers. What was the decision for this? Okay, that's a good question. Um, well, basically, to make a short story long, um, when I was in school, I was really into large scale paintings, but I didn't really know like how to do that. I had like this little Honda Civic, so I could only fit some like a, a painting so big in my car. Um, and then after I graduated, I saw Carrie James Marshall do an exhibition in New York. And he had these giant paintings, which I always wanted to do really big paintings. But like I said, I didn't know how I would transfer this. I had never been introduced to unstretched um, canvases until after I graduated college and I saw his work and I was like, I didn't know this was a thing. I didn't know this was a thing that would be accepted in a museum. Um, so after that, I just started playing around with unstretched and figuring out like what really worked for me. So the reason why I do unstretch is just because my personal favorite work is work that's like really big that I just feel like engulfed in, like I just feel like I'm a part of it. So when I wanna do something really big, it's easier to do unstretched because I can just roll it up, pop it in my car and go versus like doing something really big that's stretched. It's just way harder to transfer and move around all that. It's just way harder. Um, so that's why I have unstretched. But then I also, with the stretch paintings, there's certain ideas that I have that I just know in my mind will look better stretched. And so, it's just like a, a mental thing. Like I know certain ideas I have just won't look right in my mind unstretched. So that's why I have the variety of both. Awesome. All right. So for the third question, Jasmine Wilson says, hi, Ariel. Thank you so much for your talk and wonderful paintings. I know Carrie James Marshall is one of your favorite artists. Was the painting of you painting the fruit a homage to his work? Yes, <laughs> yes. So yeah, it is. Um, I, when I was thinking about how I wanted to, I was just really in, I'm still really into painting fruit. I don't know if I'll ever be over it. But at the time, I really just wanted to paint a fruit bowl, like a fruit basket. And um, I was trying to figure out how I could do that. But it could also go with the whole theme of my exhibition with the self-portraits and everything. So I remembered that Carrie James Marshall had paintings of figures um, sitting in front of a, a canvas with their palette in their hand. And so I was like, well, that's the way I can add myself to the painting, but also be able to have this bowl of fruit that I just really wanted to paint. Um, so yeah, it was definitely inspired by him in that way. 
Awesome. All right. So let's see. Jasmine Wilson Williams rather asks, um, I know how much you love working large and since finishing this work, you've started making smaller work. How has painting smaller been different? That's a good question because it's very much relevant right now. I just started making smaller work, I want to say a couple weeks ago. Um, and it's been quite a difference, but like a good difference. I have a lot of fun with it. It's not, it's not nearly as stressful. Like the large paintings take up so much of my energy, like physically, like I have to stand up majority of the time painting these big ones. It's just been really chill. I think that's the best way to describe it because I've just been sitting down on the floor in my living room painting these small paintings watching Sailor Moon. That's been my thing like I want to say for the past three weeks. It's just been my thing. So it's been way more relaxed and easy. I can finish these small paintings in like two days. It's been I'm like going from painting these giant ones to these small ones. It's just so much more relaxing. So Yes. And hi, Jasmine. I love you. So next question is from Christy Gomez. Thank you for sharing your talent, Ariel. You spoke about choosing to paint moments that felt important. What about a moment makes it feel elevated, important, and makes you want to capture it in a permanent way? That's a good question. And it's a hard, it's good and it's hard at the same time. Um, uh, but basically, it just, it just comes to me whenever I'm kind of living in the moment, I always, I, hmm, how can I say this? I think when I decided to start painting about my life, I just started, whenever I'm experiencing things, I kind of overanalyze in a way, but it's worked out well for me when it comes to my art. So whenever I'm doing something, I kind of overthink it and think like, is this moment special? Can I make something out of this moment? So like the Friendsgiving painting, for instance, that was one that I knew ahead of time that I wanted to create because I was like, I've already done this Friendsgiving two years in a row. I know this third year, I want to make this into a painting because I know this is important to me. But then I have paintings, like there's a painting that's not in this exhibition that I did before, where it's me, my sister and my best friend, Amber, and I was doing her hair and just mid doing her hair, it just clicked in my mind that this was a moment that should be captured because not only is hair just like an important thing in black culture, like braids and twist protective styles in general, like just the unity of like me and my sister and her doing her hair, it just felt right. So it kind of just comes to me when I'm living life, I'm just like, does this moment feel special? And if it does, I usually either put it in my notes or like in my phone and then I come back to it or like the hair painting, it just happened and I pulled out my camera and I was like, act natural. I'm gonna take photos and I'm gonna make this into a painting. So, yeah. Awesome. All right, so for our next question, it's from Fehamu Peku. He's asking, how do you see the personal diary thematic underscoring your work evolving? Are you exploring other mediums, writing, performance, et cetera? Ooh, good question. Everyone's asking such a good question. Um, I think, well, I have been exploring other mediums since the end of this, like since this exhibition went up. I knew this whole year while I was working on this that I wanted to play around with other stuff afterwards. And I've been doing like oil pastel little drawings and like I said earlier like these smaller acrylic paintings I know that acrylic is my favorite just based off of when I was in school we had to take all these random art classes and acrylic was always my favorite but I think over time I have been able to kind of evolve with my face doesn't have to be in every painting like the Juneteenth painting um I was like, I can still have an impact and do, it can still be a self portrait, but I don't have to like have my face in it. It can be, you know? So I definitely think it's been evolving other time and I've been experimenting with different things. And like the, the Friendsgiving painting is the first one I've done with so many other people because I'm usually, before that it would either be me or like me and one other person. 
Um, so yeah, I, I would say like over time, especially just having this opportunity with Mocha, I've been able to really just play around with other things. And I definitely think I'll still be playing around with other things. Um, like I have the video projection that's at Mocha right now. That was really fun to make over the year, just recording my process and editing it and adding the, the um, music and the, the quote. And yeah, I, I definitely think I'm, it's evolving and I, I like playing around with a lot of different things. So it'll probably never stop the ideas. <laughs> awesome. All right. So our next question is from Stacy from Mocha. And Stacy says that it's been a pleasure working with you and watching the process where where you're working at several. Wait, what were you? Oh, were you working at at several at once time during the year? Wait, was, I, was I working on several paintings at once? At the oh, same time. Yes. Were you working at, sorry, were you working at <laughs> on several at the same time during the year? Because you kept saying that um, you were working on this one a couple months, but this was your last one. And so it sounded like you had several going at the same time. Yes. So for me, it's like, I'm pretty sure I have either ADHD or ADD. So I just, I can't, like, I cannot work on one painting at the same time. I mean, at once and finish it. It's just literally not possible for me. So I would say throughout making work for this exhibition, I was working at three paintings in unison because whenever I would reach a point with one painting where I was just sick of looking at it, I just, I always reach a point where I'm just like, I can't even look at you. You're making me sick. I'll just bounce to another one. So it was always like three at the same time. Um, so that's why I know I have the whole timeline in my head where I'm like, this is the first one, this is the last one, this is the fifth one, um, because I can, I, I have to bounce around. And I know, I feel like Fahamu, if you're in the chat, confirm, I feel like you told me that you have to finish them all at once. And I found that interesting because I just don't know, I can't do that. Yeah, not possible. Let's see. So the next question is from Jasmine Wilson, which is a follow-up to Fahamu's question. Have you considered graphic novels? I'm thinking of Marjan Satrapi, Satrapi's graphic memoir, Persepolis. I, I have never thought about graphic novels, but the idea of it, you saying it has, is making me think about it now, but no, I, I haven't. I'll have to look into that. All right, let's see. Next question is from Davian. Your painting is inspired by camera at, by the camera as a tool. Can you speak on this, the similitude of painting to photography? Tracing light is a po is a poetic in your presence. Wow. Um, ooh, in your practice, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's, it, that's an interesting question because I, I took photography, I took three, three or four different photography classes when I was in school. It was one of my favorite classes, but I never did get in it. I think I got C's every photography class I took, but I always loved it. Um, I don't know why that is. I f I'm just not good at it. Like when it comes to cameras, I'm just not good at understanding like the the verbiage of cameras and how to work them but I always loved photography and it it all my paintings always came from photographs uh but I never really thought that like deep into it like your question's so like good but I don't really have like a really good answer for it I just know that I have a love for photography even though I'm not very good at it um and it, it definitely, if I didn't have photography, my paintings wouldn't be a thing because I don't go from off of my head. I go from the photographs I take. So yeah, I don't really have a great answer for that question, but it's a good one. And I do love photography. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just not good at it. All right, let's see. Next question is from Jasmine Williams. Lighthearted, but yet very important. What are you watching during this time? What are your favorite snacks? What were your favorite snacks? Ooh, my favorite kind of question. Um, 
Well, like I said earlier, I've been obsessed with Sailor Moon. I have Sailor Moon up on my TV right now. I'm literally looking at it. I paused it for this. I'm on episode 61, Queen. Um, so Sailor Moon has been... Mm, I love anime. It's like Death Note. I, I just finished watching Death Note for the third time before I started Sailor Moon. Um, Avatar, Last Airbender. The, I'm just... Animes are my fuel. Um, as far as snacks, girl, I'd be trying to be healthy. So my snacks are really boring. Like I, I eat a lot of apple chips. It sounds really depressing, but they're really good. Like <laughs> apple chips with cinnamon seasoning on them. What else do I snack on? Grapes. It's boring. I try to eat healthy because I still, I stay home most of the time because of COVID. So I'm not that active. So my snacks are very boring, but I'm really, I'm all about the anime life. So that's what I've been watching. I love that question. Davian asks, what books are you reading? Ooh, I, I have a, can I show? I have a book stack right here. Wow. It's kind of small, that, that does not look impressive. Um, well, I just bought the Black Futures book and I'm waiting for that to come in. So that's gonna be probably my new favorite, but it's gonna sound whack. But my favorite book right now, and it's because I just need lighthearted things in my life to make me not lose my brain. But my favorite book to look at is um, a book by Nicole Byer. It's called Very Fat, Very Brave. And she's a comedian slash actress. If you don't know who Nicole Byer is, you should find out. She has a podcast that's so funny. It's called Why Won't You Date Me? But anyways, her book is like my favorite book right now. And I'm like very much just just like my art I try to make lighthearted art it's really just because I'm really sensitive and really heavy stuff depresses me in a way that's like I can't even explain so I just need lighthearted things to balance my life so her book very fat very brave is literally just a book of her in like a hundred different bikinis and she's talking about how to like buy bikinis when you're fat and like this this and that it's just it's just great literally chef's kiss so I, I recommend Nicole Byer if you just need a good little time so that's my favorite book right now it's not deep at all <laughs> all right so our next question is from Fahamu the diary tome is so dope because there is a reveal of an intimacy of an intimacy within the community, Black women, that is rarely explored. Your work, sorry, it moved. Your work voices Black women's sacred space in powerful ways. Is it ever uncomfortable to paint your life so publicly? Publicly, it's not. And I remember being asked this when I was in school because. But in college, I was painting a lot of nudes and no one else was doing nudes. And I remember people were asking me like, why do you have so many nude paintings? I don't know why. I'm just like, when it comes to my work, I'm very much open because I really respect people that are open and vulnerable. So I want to be the kind of person that I respect and look up to. So I've never really felt that way. I'm always just like, this is what it is. I wanted people to relate to me because I search for people to relate to. That's what makes me feel good is when I can come across someone that's just being open and honest. So that's how I want to be. So it's never been uncomfortable for me because that's what I try to be. Awesome. All right, so our next question is from Otto. Um, thanks for sharing tonight. I couldn't help but enter each work by the various styles of furniture you chose to support your, you choose to support your figures and objects. I was wondering if you could share a little more about the furniture in general. Oh, that's a good question, but it's hard to answer. When it comes to furniture and paintings, I really just go for what I like. Um, whatever style furniture I'm into, like, we'll, we'll use this, for example, this painting right here. I'm, I really like these kind of, like, lounge chairs. I don't know what the style of this even is called. Uh, but when it comes to furniture, it really just depends on what I'm into. Like, the Euphoria painting, I wanted the bed to have this purpley, like, head, this, like, very, like, 
stylistic stylish headboard I don't know in the moment it just depends it always changed but like for this bathroom this is like my oh you can't see but this is like my favorite kind of tub it's too far away um I don't know what these are called but it's my favorite type kind of bathtub my favorite kind of lounge I really like dark wood so that's why it's like dark wood so it really just is based off of the style I'm into and nothing really more than that. It's just whatever I like, that's what I put in the paintings. So the next question is from Amber. You focus so much time on this exhibition. What's next in your career? Do you have other things in the works? Amber, what a great question, Amber. Um, yeah, right now I'm just um, working on smaller paintings because I keep, having these conversations about like accessibility. Like I make these really big paintings that are quite pricey. Like I couldn't even buy one of my own paintings realistically. So I have conversations with people like in my community about, you know, I, I'm making art for people like me, but it's very large. Like some people are like, where did I put it? Um, can't afford it, this, this and that. So ever since, the MOCA exhibition went up, I wanted to start working on smaller works that are just more accessible for people like me in my community. Um, so that's what I've been focusing on right now, but I do have some stuff happening in 2021 that I'm excited about, but because of COVID and everything, it's been kind of a slow turnover, but I do have some things in the works and I'm steadily painting like I don't have any other hobbies other than like watching TV. So I watch TV and paint. So it's always some type of painting going on. Let's see. Uh, Ivina asks, do you ever think about painting your husband's pro portrait with him alone? Yes, I have. I've um, had ideas of painting like him or like my dad or um, like I've had ideas. I'm just... I'm, I mull it over. I do really like like self-portraits kind of being my signature and it might be a Leo thing that I just want to place myself in all of my paintings, but um, I have had thoughts of adding other people and not myself, like my siblings or my mom or my grandma. Um, so I, I'm always thinking about it, but with this year being like a pandemic and social distancing, distancing and whatnot a lot of the ideas I had for paintings in the beginning just couldn't happen because um people weren't just coming to my house because I, I did have ideas of like having a painting of my sisters and my parents and my grandparents and it just didn't happen so maybe next year we have a question from Ken who asks how do you price your own paintings? What are the factors you take into account, labor, materials, et cetera? Um, when it comes to the prices, I'm still kind of like learning how to price everything and be like reasonable because it, you have to think about like, I'm a new artist versus I'm like an artist that's well known. So that's like a price difference right there. And then you have to consider materials, how long it took, um, that I consider, I don't know if other artists do, but the amount of detail, like the amount of effort, like if, even if I use the same materials and it's the same size, but if the amount of detail and effort is different than another one, that's like the same size and materials, it's gonna be priced more. Um, and that's just the way I think about it, but I really am still, figuring all that out I kind of just gauge like I take advice from other artists like what do you think this should be priced as um so yeah I'm still kind of figuring it out Ariel we are so proud of you and so proud of this exhibition it's your first museum solo exhibition yes uh I hope that you really feel cared for loved and appreciated tonight i do thank you so very very much um i just want to say thank you to everyone who joined i see so many like family and friends and 
people from like Instagram who support me. So thank you for coming to this and asking really good questions. And I really just love the support. So thank you. Thank you.